there's a shift toward electricity as part of the transition toward more sustainable energy generation and consumption. However, designing for home emerging electricity technologies is both a technical and a contextual challenge. It is a technical challenge because it aims at building intelligent product service systems that combine emerging and complex technologies. Today we can buy solar photovoltaics at IKEA to generate our own electricity, harvesting solar energy on our roofs. We can charge an electric vehicle in our garage. We can warm our house with a heat pump extracting calories from our garden. And we can store electricity in a home power bank sitting right next to our washing machine. It is also a contextual challenge because it involves people living in a home, the nest they are building for the best part of their lives. Householders are not consuming electricity. They are washing their clothes, driving their car, cooking for dinner. They are carrying their activities using appliances and these appliances are consuming electricity. But honestly, there is only a handful of tech-savvy pioneers with the money and the dedication to accept the technical all overhead. In this context, design solutions must not only work technically, but also fit in householders' daily routines and support them through the energy transition. I am Jackie from the Data-Centric Design Lab here at TU Delft. In this series, we'll illustrate the six stages of the data-centric design approach with a case study. Watching these videos, you should be able to explain the contextual and technical challenges of designing for home emerging electricity technologies. Besides, you should be able to illustrate each step of the data-centric design approach with examples from this case study. For this, we'll dive into the Thinking Energy, a four-year project led by the energy provider E.ON to better understand this new home energy context. The goal was to design innovative services for solar PV households for supporting household electricity management. The project took place in Mildenkins, UK and required about 1.7 million euros, involving a dedicated team organizing and coordinating on the ground and online participant support, a consulting firm organizing individual interviews and workshops, teams of hardware and software engineering, a collaboration with university and IoT automotive and appliances manufacturers. Not here the breadth of profiles and expertise needed for such projects. This significant investment highlights the benefits that energy provider can get out of a better understanding of their customers. I have been involved in two sub-projects focused on washing machines and electric vehicles. In this series, I'll lead you through these projects to illustrate the role of IoT and data throughout the design process. Okay, first thing first, there are several terminologies emerging when it comes to design and data. In her book, Designing with Data, Rachel King distinguishes three levels of data use. Each of them tune the role of designers and the importance given to data in design decisions. At the center of the circle, you have the data-driven design, putting most of the design decision motivation on data. It is heavily used in the web industry with analytics and A-B testing. It gives the highest weight to hard numbers. Then you have data-informed design, in which the designer's intuition and educated guess are given equal importance against the numbers. Finally, King extends this landscape with data-aware design. Here, the designer is aware of the data, but these numbers have a very limited impact on the design decisions. 
Aside that, data-enabled design was coined by Borger and Kohlenberg in 2016 to enrich the early stage of the design process. They used this method to collect, analyze, and enrich human activity data in close interaction with participants. Through the process, they generate pretty unique insights from the highly contextual environment to inform the design of healthcare devices. At the data-centric design lab, we think about data as a new material that designers should include as part of their design palette throughout the design process. Looking at data trails with an ethnographic perspective allows designers to reflect on how people behave online and offline, how they adopt and use products and services, and even how they feel. We propose a six-stage iterative design process in which data can play an organic role depending on the context, the stage, and the aim of this iteration. This data-centric design approach is part of the Delft Design Guide. First, contextual data collection is about setting up the infrastructure, software, or algorithm that will bring you data. In the data exploration, you conduct a rich, organic generation of data visualization of all kinds, immersing yourself into the context. With the data analysis, you become more focused, driven by a question, a hypothesis, or even an intriguing exploration insights. Then you design concepts derived from these data insights. You can embed data in the product or prototype realization, which offer opportunities for product analytics. So what's next? In each video, I will lead you through a design process iteration of the Thinking Energy project, providing you with examples of data-centric activities. The first iteration aimed at generating energy awareness for householders by collecting and displaying energy consumption and generation. The second iteration focused on the relationship between electricity that is generated locally on the roof of, from solar photovoltaics and the electricity that is consumed by the householders. Toward the end of the project, our iteration focused on higher level information and the development of tools to support electricity demand shifting, that is shifting the use of electrical devices to times when solar electricity generation is at its highest. So let's jump into the next video to start with the first data-centric iteration focusing on energy awareness.